Oh, we, right, we are live. Yes. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for coming to support the uh, South Louisiana GEG, the global GEG, um, everybody out there. Um, and today we're going to have the lovely Tyler Colson, and she's going to talk about her experiences of being an out uh, educator in the Deep South. And we have Patty here, also from Louisiana, Louisiana, taking over. Um, and she's just here to, to hang out. So please, please, please put all of your questions in the chat. Um, and so we can make sure like we, um, you know, are answering it. Like Tyler, you know, if you've got a comment question, if you can relate to any of this, like let us know. Um, so Tyler. Okay. I'm to make you bigger. No, not so long. Um, you ready? Yeah. All right. So the way I'm just going to talk is I'm just going to go through my life, um, like my teaching career, because a lot of times people are like, oh, like you're an out person to your students. Like, how do you I'm gonna do remove us? I'm letting Tyler do this by herself. I just didn't tell her. All right. <laughs> there you go. OK, so. um, Yeah. So they're like, oh, well, you must have told your students or you must have like, how do you navigate being out? Like, do you just say, hey, I'm gay? No, that is, that did not happen. Um, a lot of times people are like, well, how how did you just get the courage? So I have to start my senior year of college. Um, so my mother, <laughs> she is a, a character and my mom, she was applying for jobs for me. I only had a I was getting my degree in history. Um, so she's like, well, New Orleans children are bad and they're always going to need a teacher. So she was, my parents are from New Orleans. So she was like, well, I'm going to apply. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. But she was like, I'm going to apply for jobs for you um, in New Orleans because they're desperate. And even though you don't have a teaching license, you'll have a history degree. You pass the practice. They're going to be desperate. So I interviewed at a school about 10 minutes from my, yes, social studies teachers unite. Yes. Um I interviewed about 10 minutes from my grandmother's house and immediately they, I think this was, I graduated in December of 2013, January, they called me, they hired me on spot and I, I knew something was wrong. They ran away, that class ran away five teachers in that school year. So uh, they hired me, um, they figured I was broke enough to stick around, which I was. Um, Fun fact about Mararo, shout out to Patty, uh, <laughs> who taught in Mararo, uh, which is on the West Bank of New Orleans. Everybody there knows everybody. They always talk. So my grandmother wound up telling, she rest her soul, my grandmother was very messy <laughs> and she would run her mouth. So she would call all her friends and say, hey, like, Tyler is, um, she, she got a job. My baby got a job. My baby isn't, you know, going to Xavier now for grad school. And she's going to be teaching at the, at Worley. So one of her Macy friends um, was like, man, your, your granddaughter, like she ain't about that life. Or like, you, she just going to be out here being a thought, I guess. And so my grandmother was like, Tyler ain't going to pop up pregnant or nothing. Like she's not going to be doing it because she gay. So... <laughs> That was her way of being proud of me for not being pregnant, which did not work because <laughs> she told this woman that I'm not going to be a thought because I'm gay and I can't get pregnant. Well, <laughs> she, that grandmother wound up telling her granddaughter and telling everybody on the West Bank, yeah, that teacher, Miss Colson, the new one is gay. So that child went and told the whole school <laughs> that Miss Colson is a lesbian. Or gay, whatever. So I think I have been working at Worley for about a month. And what I just said was the teachers, I mean, the students, they tried to run me off, right? They ran off five of the teachers throughout that school year. So, I mean, oh, Lord, them children did everything. They was throwing stuff in the classroom, like, just to get me to quit. So finally, one of them was like, Miss Colson, I heard you was a dyke. So I had to step back and I was just like, whoa, like, where is this coming from? Um, so I, I'm like, OK, what do I say? Do I say, uh, like, don't call me no dyke. Like, I'm about to slap you. Like, what do you say to that? So I was like, OK, she does not know the word. Like, she does not know that that's offensive. And I think as teachers, we have to 
just take a step back and think, okay, where is this coming from? Like, is this child trying to be hurtful? So I'm like, okay, they ran off these other teachers. She trying to she trying to play with me. And I was like, no, no, no. She really, the, the lingo of New Orleans, she did not know. So I say, you know what? I'm just going to say, yes, I am a lesbian. And I think she wasn't expecting that. So um, when, when, when I said that, she just looked at me like, <laughs> and then when she looked at me like that, it was it was just over with. I was shocked because the kids didn't care. They went on to do other stuff to torment me, but it had nothing to do with me being gay. So I was just like, wow, like we're in the 21st century. It's not a big deal to these students in New Orleans at all. And then after a while to the teachers at that particular school, um, I didn't really have any issues or any problems. Um, so. I was like, you know what, this is going to be me. I, I'm just going to, the whole school knew I didn't have to tell anybody anymore. Like it was just, it was just a known thing. Uh, I think my main problem came when I came to Baton Rouge. So I have been working at the school in New Orleans for about two years, but I am from Baton Rouge. So I came home and uh, it was a school, <laughs> if you are familiar with Baton Rouge, I always call uh Florida Boulevard. And we are glad to have you. We are glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead. I won't let you hang out by yourself. But Thanks. I really do. I really like what you said about how it was like a teachable moment. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like, and I think that that really covers a lot of bases. Like there are a lot of times where kids say something and, and our initial reaction is like, you shouldn't say that. But it's like, hey, why, why did you say that? I thought it was really good. I had to come on and give you some credit for that. Yeah, um, I, I had, you know what, what helped me too was my mom. So it was my maternal grandmother. So my mom's from the same area. And she told me a story where everybody was calling this lady a bull dagger. And so she told the lady, she was like, hey, you're a bull dagger. And so, <laughs> and she got spanked. And my mom said she never knew why she got spanked, but just repeating what other people said. So, you don't get flagged by YouTube. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> well you're right you're right like i mean i i don't know i i work in the same district as tyler so i was really glad when she said she'd come talk about this because this is something um we started talking about the other day is like what teachers deal with behind the scenes like you know like every you have to show up and you have to be great and um everybody has their own like their own trauma they're trying to over okay. overcome so continue exactly teachable moments all right so continue tyler oh. i'm <laughs> just the story but no not really and 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 but you're right like it's just lingo and culture like teaching how mm -hmm. do i say with cultural competency like knowing your students like you say yeah. you can't just react no mm -mm. I've, I've done that before i've had kids say something that was really hurtful and i got hurt and then and now i'm just like oh, i've been called worse and they're like oh okay well then we're not gonna yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. especially middle school man middle school they just they looking for that what what like what wound can they rub salt on? Like they're just looking, All right? And so, but um, yeah, you know, it's a really, really good teachable moment. So I'm really proud of you personally. But continue, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine because I, I, I was scared. I was talking too fast. So, um, <laughs> so I wound up coming to. Lord, I, I'm not gonna say the school name, but I came to <laughs> um to South Baton Rouge. Uh, it was a let's say half and half black and white uh mm -hmm. school um and so i remember i was i came to like the what is it teacher's lounge i had to think of that because i don't use it anymore <laughs> and so when i came to the teacher's lounge i think somebody asked me what i had planned for the day or something or what i was doing i don't remember the question what i was like yeah my girlfriend blah 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 bonnie you could hear a mouse piss on cotton <laughs> it was like the whole teacher's lounge just stopped and I'm like <laughs> it so it was just so much of a difference from me going from New Orleans to Baton Rouge because I'm like because mm -hmm. New Orleans is a, like a liberal bubble it is it's it I mean oh. you know you so safe person New Orleans is different like it just grew up different than the rest of us it's its own little own place 
Right. And, you know, in New Orleans, I had like my teacher friends who would like make out with me on Bourbon Street because they didn't want guys to come and <laughs> hit on them. <laughs> right. Too, from YouTube. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get to Baton Rouge and I say, oh, my girlfriend. And it was just like quiet. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, did you have like I know I had um, I had one year where I felt like I had like three or four kids like come out to me. It was like one eighth grade class. And I remember like, wait, why am I getting tagged for this? Like, I, and because I, every kid, I would be like, I have absolutely no idea how you feel. And let's be careful. Like, that's what I would say. It was like my going. And they liked that. Like, they really appreciated that I wasn't going, I understand. Because I kept going, like, that must be terrible. Like, you, are you super stressed? Like, I feel like you're stressed. And they would be like, oh, I am. Like, <laughs> that sounds rough. Like, middle school's hard enough. Um, so I did. I had I had one, one year. I just felt like I had, like, four kids. And I was like, guys, y'all are, we got a lot going on. And you don't know what to, I still don't know what to say to kids when they're like, oh, what do I do if I my parents don't accept me? I don't know. I don't have an answer. <laughs> but I think, I, like I said, I really, I felt like a lot of kids would, and I'm not that good with feelings. You might know me laugh about this because I'll be like, ah, I don't know. It was like a lot of feelings for one conversation. And uh, and that was, to me, that was always like the answer was like, that sounds rough. I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> um, but like as a teacher to like, after you left that school, though, I mean, now I feel like you feel like you still like can't. I mean, because I know you and you say spouse with a quickness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first time I met Tyler, we were at a training and she was like, this picture of my wife. And I was like, OK, then Here, go ahead. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I made a friend today. Like, I've <laughs> been a good little mood. Um, but I know not everybody's like that. Like, what do you think? Is there like a specific event that like led you to be like, OK, I'm just I can't worry about this anymore? Uh, I would say at that particular school, because I just felt once it got quiet like that, I'm like, OK, I'm just very uncomfortable and people did not want to interact with me. People didn't really talk to me. It was just mm -hmm. like and then I had so the, it's my wife was my girlfriend at the time. I remember I had a guy uh, who I, I was a social studies inclusion teacher there and mm -hmm. he was like, you don't you, how do you know you're gay? Um, you don't want to try a dick for the again like for the last time I'm like, <laughs> I'm like sir no <laughs> and he was mm -hmm. like he he really was just like yeah I'm gonna you know and I, I and I told him like stop like you're really sexually harassing me so yeah. I like set speaking and saying something but it was just like oh well he's gonna go at the end of the year and then the next school year I see him on the news like he told something to a student. So I'm just like, you have to take those things seriously when teachers say something. And I think that's not just, you know, it being gay, but that's just women, especially in Baton Rouge, we definitely have a patriarchy problem. And it's just like nothing was done. And I only stayed at that school for eight months. But I mean. I didn't. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know right now, like, I, you, you know, sexual harassment can like it's it's a red flag, but. Um, I definitely think that's a good idea, you know, good point. Like that line is, isn't, is less clear. Yeah. Like just commenting on somebody's sexuality, like you shouldn't have to take it and you should, you know, like schools should hold people accountable for that kind of language. For sure. See, that makes me mad. I gotta go find people now. <laughs> I don't think he's teaching anymore, but I mean, yeah. So I wound up, this is, when I went to Park Forest, I didn't know what I was going to do because I only stayed at that school mm -hmm. for a month. And then I wound up going to Park Forest. So I'm like, okay, what do I do? This is my third school. Like the first time I was out at the second time, like I said something to teach them. Now. The kids didn't know, but I'm just like, mm -hmm. that was not a good experience. So I'm like, okay, this school, I'm going to stay at for a while. Mm -hmm. How do I navigate yeah. being out? So Were you married at that point? No, I was getting married. I was engaged at that point. Okay, okay. Now I met you, you were like, you had just gotten married. Like, yeah, I still had the pictures right here on your phone. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, yeah. So uh, I came to Park Forest. I wound up, I think I just say it now. Like, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, no, the year of the flood. I came from in 16, the year of the flood. And uh, we had like a teacher circle group. And they're like, what are you, what are you most afraid of? Like, what are you? what's going on with you? And I wound up just saying, hey, my my fiance, she went through Katrina. 
Um, mm -hmm. And she swam out and like she was having flashbacks and PTSD and I don't know what to do for her. So when I said my fiance, she, I was like, okay, let me look at people's reactions. And they were like, okay. So <laughs> it was just, that's how it, it happens. And I, yeah. I do have, you know, I have one of you know my favorite people. I think Bonnie, we have this mutual person. She's religious. I love her. And she'll just say stuff like, uh, yeah, I just oh, but she's so lovely. Like so you sweet. can't hate her, even though she's wrong. Like you're like you, <laughs> like you can't hurt hate. And that that is I love that about you, like that you have that ability to like you know her thoughts on it. And yeah. you, you disagree, but like you still got her back. Like you still very much support her. Um yeah, I do I do love that person. I do love that person. But it's the same thing, like um, yeah, we have very different beliefs. And she, but she's sweet. And she'll say like, she'll ask about my wife. She's like, how's Shayna doing? And how, how are you doing? And oh, that's like, a really good question. How was the, how is the relationship with your, and your, with your students and their parents? Okay. I'm getting, Thank you. I'm getting to okay. that. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she's, she's really sweet. And she was just like, I just wish you both of y'all were fine husbands. I love you both. And I'm like, that's not going to happen, ma'am, but thank you. I love you too. <laughs> so I think we again being in the deep south she loves me she will she yes. has my back i have her back even though she doesn't agree she still loves me she loves my wife she asked for my wife more than she asked for me so i think uh, again in navigating situations like that we definitely have to say okay where's this person coming from is this person trying to be malicious no they're not yeah. we can just yeah. agree, disagree and yeah i mean so like you navigate with the kids first almost and then you navigate you know, with your with your coworkers, and now we have a really good question about how you yeah. navigate all this with parents. Right. Okay. So this is the hardest part because when I came to my current school, I started as a cheerleading coach, and I didn't have issues. Um, my kids knew because again, the first day of of practice, I'll say, "Oh, my wife this, my wife this," or first day of school, my wife this, and the whole school knows after five seconds. Um, but as a cheerleading coach, yeah, it was just. Important. Yeah, it was just a little difficult because it was just like some parents thought I was making their kids gay. They're like, oh, well, she doesn't need to have her wife at games. But I'm like, every other person coach got their children and their partners at games. And then they were mm -hmm. like, well, what is she doing? Like, and it's I hate the fact that people like associate gay with me being like a sexual deviant because they were like, well, she's around with little girls. And I'm like, well, I'm a teacher. Like. That's what I do. Like, yeah. don't even say that stupid shit. I'm sorry, cuz. But don't even say that. You know what I'm saying? But it would definitely had um, parents take their their kids off the cheerleading team. And I had a parent go to my principal and complain. And he was like, uh, you're kind of stupid. But <laughs> Well, that's um, good. I mean, I, I know for principals, it's hard. Um, I know, I mean, I know people who are, you know, like there are pl plenty of teachers who just have to keep their personal life, um, you know, quiet. And I think it's really hard, you know, it, do you find it's better from, from experiences from like the beginning to now, like, is it almost better to like come out on your own terms and like navigate it and not be nervous? Definitely, definitely. And I definitely think I have privilege. Well, I know I have privilege because I'm a girl. You know, one of my best friends is a guy and he's gay and he is out to I everybody. I love that guy. I love yeah. that guy. <laughs> he's out to everybody in the world, but he can't really be out to students because it's just the kids accept like me being gay. They think, oh, I'm about, you know, she's she's experimenting or that's what girls do. They it's okay with them to to be together yeah. or whatever, but they're they're not accepting of males. So I, I know think, we really wanted him coming talk. He's not ready, but we're gonna keep yeah. asking. Yeah, I'm gonna keep asking him, but because he's, he's lovely, he's awesome. But you know, I I really think that the kid. Well, I know the kids would accept it. The parents maybe not so much. And again, being in Southern Louisiana, in the not in not New Orleans, um, it'll be New difficult. <laughs> yeah, New Orleans. Do is you different. think? Like, have you noticed the differences in the, the past few years? Like, do you think the future generations being better or parents? Is always gonna be terrible because sometimes i worry parents are always gonna be terrible oh no I think <laughs> definitely the kids the parents my general millennials or uh what did you say uh, an, an elder, elder millennial, millennial. <laughs> yeah elder millennial <laughs> millennials we, we're, we're 
shout out to us. Like I yeah. think we've been in the narrative a lot. Um, it's just it be we're way more accepting. Um, I, I I still have issues um, being out, being at my school. Like uh, there was a, a a time where I went to basically I think it was a year ago. The assistant principal at the time was like, "Hey, can you go to this suicide training because they say um, LGBTQ students." commit suicide more and I think you'll yeah do that and I'm just like that's not a reason for me to go to this suicide prevention like, just educate yourself yeah. <laughs> you're gonna say like I know you need to send somebody maybe that doesn't know right you know like let us send somebody with me um right. that maybe isn't aware as as much because I think that that is a staff though yeah um, yeah so yeah definitely like I would I would definitely say like to administration, like you should probably send people, not just the most sensitive people, but maybe the people who have more to learn too, um, to those kinds of trainings. And I think, so to answer about Norma again, the hardest, and I'll tell the story, the, the most difficult time I had with the parents was, who I'm still, I'm still like- Hi, Stacey Klein, she's saying how amazing you are. I think you guys will be best friends. I don't know if y'all really met each other, but y'all would be best friends. Through Twitter. <laughs> mm -hmm. That would be a game, yes. Yes, um, thank you too. But this, it was this little boy who I did not teach him, but um, another teacher said, hey, can you talk to him? Because like he's in class making very obscene things, yeah. and I just think he's not okay with his sexuality. So I pulled him to the side. I'm like, look, hey, this is me. This is who I am. If you need to talk to anybody, you know, talk to me. Well, he was like, I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I said, I never said you were. I'm just saying, if you need to speak with somebody about your feelings, you know, talk to me. Mm -hmm. So he was very, to this day, he's he's not okay with who he is. So he went to a parent. Um, his parent came to the school and was like, well, which teachers was talking about my child? So I wound up being in a conference with my principal. Mm -hmm. And the lady was not mad at me. But um, she was just, she's really defensive. And she was like, well, which teacher told you this? Who was talking, basically, she said, I'm not going to sugarcoat. Who was talking shit? I'm like, nobody was talking shit, ma'am. Like, <laughs> we were just trying to look out for your child. I've had well, those conferences. Same team, ma'am. Same team. We're on the same team. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it was like, she just was going and going and going. And I really didn't feel supported by my principal because he was like, well... <laughs> I, any other time I would have had to send you to HR. I'm like, for what? And I called HR, I called my union and I'm like, they're like, you did nothing wrong. But he was ready to throw me under the bus because he didn't educate himself because he was like, oh, well, I don't know anything about this gay. And he told me that he was like, I don't know anything about, you know, this. Just don't, don't. He said, don't say well, then anything. you should be could have called HR. Yeah, right. He was like, no, you're not Thank supposed to talk about that. anything about your life. And you're oh, you're only here to teach. You're only here to teach. That's it. And I'm just like, no, I'm not. I'm here to build relationships. So, I mean, I was really ready yeah. to go to HR because I was like, if you're going to do that, then do that. But the, the, the mom was like, no, don't do that. And she told the principal something. She was like, that's not what it is. I just want to know who was saying this and who was saying that. And I'm just like, OK, like, man, yeah, we're not. Well. Yeah, you're not in this. The problem in my head wasn't her. It was him and how just how he handled the situation. And he wound up telling me in a one on one. He was like, we had somebody who was trans and we couldn't we, we didn't know what to do with them with the yeah. bathroom. I'm like, we have gender neutral bathrooms for teachers. Come on now. That's all you have to do. Is yeah, just like what? But he was like, and I already, you know, had parents come here about the cheerleaders. And that was the last year I did cheerleading because I'm just like, I just I don't know. But I feel like. Your mom, yeah, um, your mom was like, okay, but like, do you feel bad? Like when you see kids like whose parents aren't, you know, like you're like, um, I know they had like the It Gets Better project and stuff like kids whose parents aren't going to be okay. Like who are, they're, they're going to struggle coming out to their parents. Like, how do you, I don't know. How do you deal? Oh, uh, I still, I still don't know about like when the kids come out to me. Uh, yeah. I don't know an answer. Yeah. That's what I mean. But like. You know, these kids are like, oh, my God, like that's how I feel. My kids are saying, like, it's, it's got to be hard. And you can relate. You can relate to the situation. They're like, oh, that's going to be so hard for you. I oh, they come out to me all the time. Like, I had one little girl this past year. It's like, I don't know what to tell my mom. And I'm like, baby, I don't know what to tell her. Like, just tell her. And she says, mm -hmm. well, what if my parents, like, disown yeah. me? And I, I don't know. I can't. 
I told her, well, when you 18, move out. And that's all you can do. Because <laughs> honestly, I, I know the feeling. When I was 14, I came mm-hmm. out and I told my mom I was a bisexual just so she could have hope. So <laughs> when I went to New York, when I went to New Orleans, she was like, okay, you're going to like date a face player because they like short women and like they're going to put some. That's a stat. Magic. Is this your mom's side? Your mom yes. is, a, is a, a professor, right? Like she got, yes. she got research on this. <laughs> so she's like, Saints, the Saints players love short girls and you're just going to meet the magic, I guess the magic penis that's going to you know, get you go to the other way. But to this day, I think my, my mom thinks I'm bisexual. And I'm like, mom, I told her one time, when I when I told her I was engaged, she's just like, well, 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 what about the guy? I was like, what guy? I've dated all these girls. When have you ever seen me date a guy? And she just was, what about that guy that liked you? Yeah, he liked me. You know, you know, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of guys out there. I don't have to marry all of them. Um, <laughs> maybe something I've had to say. <laughs> but yeah, but, when, when kids come out, all I can say is, um, you know, they may, and I have to be, it hurts my heart because I can't say they will accept you or every, I can't say everything is going to be okay because it's, oh, we don't, oh, oh I know. We were talking about you, Amanda. You about his life. Yeah, Amanda, I'm here. <laughs> we were. But yeah, I can't, I can't say everything is going to be okay or they're going to accept you because um, it may not be the truth. So all I can say is, you know, be okay with who you are and when, make sure that like you do what you have to do. To when you turn eighteen, like hit the deuces if it's it's a problem. Hit the deuces. I haven't said that. Like working from home, like I used to. I sometimes I used to go to Tyler's classroom and like absorb all that attitude, and I haven't lately. And I just realized that I haven't said anything like that in a while. In a minute. <laughs> um, but too, like you were talking about, I know something I haven't recently because you posted a lot about it. Is they uh, Supreme Court ruled that you can't. Um, and lose job because of your sexuality. I know you were super excited because that's something like you have have experienced. Yeah. Um, oh, recently. I didn't even talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, I love my school. They finally gave me the schedule I wanted like two weeks ago. But before that, they drove me crazy. Bonnie can tell you I was teaching like four classes at one time. It was crazy. It was. It was. It was crazy. <laughs> so she I was, was like, teaching though, and that's her fault. Yeah. Is that. She was managing. Tyler teaches like robotics, um, coding. Aviation. She has like two. She runs two different coding clubs at the same time somehow in the afternoon. Um, yeah, the robotics competition. They did amazing. So she, amazing, amazing teacher. And this, so it's her own fault because she's got like eight classes going at once, and they're all just sitting there. Cause ain't nobody messing with Miss uh, with Tyler. Who do they call you? They call you Miss Colson. They call me Miss Colson. Some of them call me Tyler, and I'm like, okay, I don't care. Cause I, I don't care about that. Um, I but yeah, it was, it, my schedule was crazy. So I told my wife, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just see what's out there. And I told her, you know, I, I'm a black Catholic and I know Catholic schools out here don't have no black people. So affirmative action, let's root for that <laughs> at the school. So <laughs> I went to, I applied for the school. One of the teachers gave me the, uh, the, the job description. Um, mm-hmm. And I went to the interview, Ace did. They were like, we love you. Like, we're going to give you this contract. Let's start. Um, so I was like, awesome, awesome. And then I was looking at the contract and I'm like, I told my wife, I don't know what to do because I have to make you my like beneficiary. And they're going to be mm-hmm. Shana and they're going to know. And then we're also trying to conceive. So I'm like, OK, well, what if I get pregnant in the middle of the of the of the school year and they're like okay well who are you married to and i'm just like this may be a problem so she she was like well you, this is a job outside the classroom like a full-time full-time tech facilitator is your dream job take it just don't say anything and i told her i just was very and i told bonnie i had this conversation with bonnie y'all i had this conversation <laughs> with my mom uh, like before i even took the job like i was yeah. like i had the contract in my hands like can I really hide who I am or can I really not say anything or can I, mm. and I just couldn't, I, I, I told her I couldn't. So I went to the school, I had the contract filled out and I put it on the table and I said, I need to talk to y'all. And I'm Catholic. I go to this church. That's a liberal Catholic church and they know, and this, how this, this was what June. Yeah. Early June. And I'm like, Y'all have to make a decision. I just want to let you know I'm married and it's not to a man. And they told me, thank you so much, but um, we can't 
we can't continue to hire you. Like we can't accept this contract from you. So I was like, fine. And I like walked out with an <laughs> walked out with an yeah. attitude and got in my car and cried. <laughs> and I'm just like, why are you crying tears behind yeah. these, these stupid people? Like, so yeah, that was just being denied a job just for because they had already told me like they couldn't find mm-hmm. anybody. You know, they I was perfect, but. <sighs> and yeah, and I remember when that happened, and that was uh, that made me mad. And <laughs> their loss, it was their loss. Okay, school XYZ, your loss. Um, but I know like that Supreme Court decision, like, was really you know big for you because it happened like it was like the next week, huh? Yeah, it was it like was right week. after. Yeah, it was right after. But like, do you like when you were talking about the union and stuff? I mean, and if you don't know Louisiana, we were right to work state. Like our unions aren't that powerful. What they can provide is like legal advice and support. Um, do you like find that the unions like are supportive? Like, do, have, do they discuss this kind of stuff, or is this something they should discuss more? Uh, I definitely think it's something they need to discuss more. Um, the union rep who had my back when my principal threatened to send me to HR, she was. I don't know who she was, but she was angry. Like she was a little firecracker. So I like, thank God when I called the hotline. (laughs) Yeah. Like I'm like, Hey, I need to just speak to somebody. And she was the one who picked up the phone. If it had not been for her, I might have been out of a job because nobody promised to even listen to my side of the story. Even though the child did say, you never asked me was I gay. Yeah. You know? And so it doesn't matter. And then that's, uh, honestly, Bonnie, my, my principal told me that he was like, you know, and I, I, he said that I've seen people go to HR and they've not come out. So it was like literally a threat. Like you, no matter what happens, the union is is yeah. too bad. <laughs> so I mean, it's got to be hard to like build relationships when people are telling you like not to say who you are. Um, Stacy had a good point too, like about supporting parents and how to help them like support their child and I don't know maybe it's something we should say I, I don't know a group really we have a local group that we do have a local group we do. We okay do. I don't know we need, we need to put them on the website yeah well it's called well I don't know if they're still in existence because when I was going so it's called P flag so it's like oh yeah, yeah we talked about this talked yeah about this. it's like parents and friends of lesbians and gay children I think was the acronym they might have gotten rid of the acronym and just kept the, the name long um, yeah, and so we would meet at the Unitarian Church, uh, and it would just be a support group for parents, kids. I love that place. Yes, and yeah. they, I mean, re- legitimately were running out of money, support in Baton Rouge, and at one time they just fade. Well, when I was going, it just kind of faded out. So I don't know if it mm-hmm. started again, um, but it's some, it's something that's needed. And then another thing that we definitely have to talk about is just racism because we have GSA in Baton Rouge High, we have GSA in Lehigh, but you don't mm-hmm. see a GSA at Astroma. Like, you're like, you know, um, <laughs> for like, anybody not from Baton Rouge, we have sorry. something called like, yeah, the Gifted um, Great Scholars, uh, Great Scholars Academy, which is just for like students who don't test gifted, but like, you know, basically in honors classes. Um, and yeah, like we seem to only have it at, at certain schools. Right, um, and like the yeah. magnet, all the high, the top two schools in Baton Rouge, we have GSAs. Like, and they're the, you know, and that's how they they're gonna stay the top two schools if we don't like put those pro, you know those those yeah. kinds of programs there. Um, yeah, no, I I know, I know. Well, and, and hey, look, we might even change Lehigh's name now. Uh, I know. I, I <laughs> twenty twenty, we might not have a high school named after Civil War general. <laughs> that never even that isn't even from our state. So, <laughs> but um, I'm really glad. Like, is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, I, I feel like we just we talked about students, we talked about parents, we talked about like your coworkers and like navigating legal issues. Um, but yeah, I think you have a great story, and I mean, I think it's still like unfolding. You know, like I said, I've been in your class, and you're seriously changing those kids' lives, and um you know like the this recent occurrence infuriated me but they do not deserve you and it wouldn't have lasted because if they not i mean you couldn't have hit you that's not who you are and it's very admirable the way that you you couldn't have not been tyler for five minutes like right 
you know. Um, <laughs> bye, Connie. Let's go ahead. <laughs> so, Amanda. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry. If anybody's not local, it was really funny. But, um, yeah. So, I'm really glad you came and talked to us, Alice. I'm really, yeah, I'm really, no I'm really glad. I don't and think I, we have enough people talking about this. No, no, especially, and I think what's next is um, fun facts, because my wife started this um, company, if you were in New Orleans, called Breakouts. And okay. so they provided, like, after-school support to LGBTQ students. Um, really? Yes. And so they had, oh. like, a lot of trans girls come. Yeah. And if they didn't feel comfortable in school, I when I first met her, I would, like, volunteer to help them study for the GED to get their high set oh. diploma. Oh. So it's a what's I think is we're not talking about is just like uh, gender nonconforming and transgender students like when it comes to simple uniforms um, we yep. had an issue last year where uh, we had the eighth graders like the the girls have the feather and then the boys took a bow tie picture well we oh, had a student yeah. who wanted to she wanted to have a boat she's gender not conforming and wanted to have a bow tie and so luckily my direct supervisor was like okay you can do it <laughs> but when the yearbook came out there were some issues and so this this past eight year like this past school year we said we're not even going to do that we're just going to have cap and gown so it, it's something that that can definitely like little things that we may not be aware yeah, of don't think about. you don't think about could be harmful um just in even when I was at my high school in Baton Rouge, we didn't have uniforms. And during Katrina, when uh, we had a lot of mixtures of people, we had uh, it didn't a trans girl. Right after Katrina was wild. That was yeah. a wild time. That was yes. That was, that was, <laughs> that's a whole another day talking about yeah. teaching us Katrina. Right. And we had someone come in who would wear like skirts and because McKinley at the time, we did not have uniforms. So they would wear like skirts and purses. And my principal was like suspending them every single time. And I'm just like, yeah. even we're technically not breaking the dress code because the dress code says you can't wear a skirt that's too short. Well, that person's skirt wasn't too short. I mean, <laughs> so simple things like that, that we may you have bathrooms. Um, yeah. I don't think Bad News is ready to have that conversation. Like, what do we do? Like, my principal was like, well, we had a trans person. I told them, basically, he told them to go to another school because he couldn't accommodate them with the bathrooms. And I'm like, all you had to do is, again, tell them the gender neutral bathrooms, the teacher bathrooms. They're, they're, they're not neutral. fancy. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. And, you know, when we move forward, like when we build new schools, um, I definitely hope that they think about that when they're they're planning. Um, so, like, I think that's something important too. Like, you know, when they have these planning committee meetings, and and you know, like two people go, and one of the board members is shopping online. Sorry, <laughs> easy. <laughs> um, you know, you like we be, we need to go and be make sure like in the plans there is written for that bathroom and that kind of stuff, and like that whole planning phase needs to be inundated. Um, right. with advocates for sure I know because there aren't I don't think like we talk a lot about like having diversity in all these committees and stuff but I don't think that's an area that we really seek out because people are nervous and uncomfortable right and and historically bad news has just not been accepting I mean it's always been yeah. like masculine masculine we want masculine straight <laughs> unfortunately I, I mean I have a really good friend and um and I told her, I was like, hey, she's a, a teacher too. And I was like, hey, you going to come talk? I told her, you know, I was like, what are we talking about? And she's like, no, but I'm, I'm glad you're doing it. Thanks. <laughs> I was like, and I hope she heard that because she should be here. Um, but uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm glad we talked about it. And like I said, I think there's a lot of work to be done to make it better for kids and teachers, everybody. I mean, and it can be something simple as just like being out. I mean, just letting people yeah. see that you're visible because it, again, our friend that we have in common, I'm just like, just He's be so visible. Perfect. You know, the kids, the kids don't care, but it is just really a stigma. I think the main harm comes from adult. I don't have problems with kids with me being gay. I have problems with adults who just think that. I don't know, the gay is going to spread. I'm going to sneeze on their child and they're going to become gay. Like, your child is going to be gay root. If they're, if they're gay, they're going to be gay regardless whether I'm there or not. <laughs> so, yeah. But, 
I don't know. And yeah, like I, I haven't experienced a parent. I've always taught kids who really didn't have a lot of parent involvement. So I didn't really, but I have taught, I've I taught some kids too, um, that were certainly like, that were living in group homes and stuff, um, yeah. that were figure, having to figure all this stuff out, like in a group home. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot, you know, and sometimes like, uh, you know, I had a student and she just, that wasn't, that's not what she wanted to do today. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give you a break. Can we just talk about this tomorrow? You know, um, cause she was dealing with some stuff I wasn't having to deal with. Um, but do you think like, do you guys have something like for a place to kids, like a dedicated place for kids to talk? No, <laughs> no, I know. No. And it, it's just, and it's just scary because like when you try to create that space, like I yeah. tried to, I think I had a sticker from when my wife was doing, she's now their funder of her original organization. But when she was originally in breakout, she had stickers that would say, this is a safe space. And so I would put my stickers up this with like the rainbow triangle, like this yeah. is a safe space. But I, you know, receive flag for it. And it's not just me. Anytime you talk to kids, you have to be really careful because other people admin is going to be like, oh, what did you say? Oh, I don't want to deal with that. So it is don't say anything. Or, and, and that's been the narrative, especially in the South. Um, don't say anything. Don't let them know anything. You're just here to teach. And if you say anything like or something gets misconstrued. But you can't just be there just to teach. It's impossible. Oh, the, yeah, but that, that's when it's they impossible. Think. Like, kids want to know. That's the things they care about. They find out your first name, it is on. Right. Like, right. <laughs> that's it. It's your whole day. Let's talk about your first name. And so. there's not really, uh, yeah, there's no space. Now, I do know, I went to a conference and uh, it's, I think it was California that uh, wound up having something called Queer Science, which I really like. So it's just like a whole bunch of like uh, LGBTQ scientists and then they'll bust the kids who identify as LGBTQ and they'll just do science with them, right? To show that they're gay people. Yeah, representation matters. Yes. Yeah. So I, I wanted to do that, but, and I told one of my friends, like, I really want, even though, even though I may be the only STEM person, just how can I yeah. show that we're here? But I don't know. I really only know one other educator that's gay. That's not, they're not out to kids. Yeah, I don't think, I, I don't think, I, the, you're the only one I think I know that's like out, out. It was out as much as you are. You yeah. Know, I know people who don't, who don't necessarily like hide it as much, but like don't, certainly don't tell people. Like not going to put a pride flag on, you know, sticker. Um, but Amanda's asking like, do you think that kids with younger parents are more open and understanding. I want to believe this. Like, I want to think the future is better. I really do. Let me believe that. Most definitely. I definitely think that uh, kids with younger parents or are, are, the parents are more understanding. Um, the grandparents, again, being in the South, their church, church, church is this. And the mm -hmm. Lord made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. If I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I would not be a teacher. <laughs> it's just. I know. You know, but I mean, again, with really the upcoming glad. generation is getting better. I'm really glad. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not glad because it's, it's all a bummer, but uh, I hope so. And I'm glad I think like step one is to talk about it, right? Yeah. Uh, I think the report thing was huge. I think I, I hope that there are a lot more, you know, people that are that feel safer in their position to be themselves um, because of that. That was a big deal. I think it was a little overlooked. I think people are like, well, of course you can't fire somebody for being gay. I'm like, well, he's tapping into people. <laughs> yeah. Most <laughs> definitely. Um, and yeah. I definitely think you're right. Like that, we, we talk about spaces for, you know, different people to have different resources, but there's there's not a space for kids. There's mm -hmm. not a, a LGBTQ space. And even like adults, Bad News Pride, like the they don't really do nothing but events and it's not because they don't want to it's just funding and and yeah. just mindset is Support, not there mindset, yeah 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 well maybe we can fix it all tyler you can fix all all of it <laughs> take over Ooh, tyler take wow. over hashtag it's my new it's my new hashtag but if anybody else has any questions don't let tyler go um she's got told us an amazing story i'm sure we'll have her back um, I was really glad she came up. This was her idea. And she came up with the title, not me. Because I was like, can I say that? Is that okay? And she's like, yes, that's what you're supposed to say. Got it. 
it's a big umbrella queer it's like yeah. are you questioning are you lesbian gay by the a romantic of it's like alphabet soup <laughs> only i can say that part but <laughs> i know i tell the day to tell skit i'm not supposed to say it <laughs> But it's like, okay, uh, if you have any not straight queer. So. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I, didn't, I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to say that. Well, you, like, you no. can say that. <laughs> um, well, if anybody has any questions, we're going to wrap it up. Um, feel free to reach out to me at Bonnie Chalette or Tyler Colson at Tyler Bluff Teach. Um, and it was really great to have everybody. So thank you. Thank any last words, Tyler? Huh? Oh, I said thank y'all for coming. I mean, oh, yes, yes. all right. Bye. Bye.